Close your eyes and imagine. What if the things in life that cause us the greatest pain, the things that bring us grief, are challenges? Challenges designed to help us grow to ultimately become what we were always meant to be. We feel like we've been buried, but what if, like a seed, we've been planted? And having been planted, we grow to become a mighty tree. Now, open your eyes. Open your eyes to this way of viewing life. Come with me as we explore your true, infinite, eternal nature. This is Grief to Growth, and I am your host, Brian Smith. Hey everybody, this is Brian back with another episode of Grief to Growth, and I've got with me today my friend Suzanne Giesman. Uh, I was just telling Suzanne earlier, I kind of feel like she needs no introduction because I feel like everybody in the world knows who she is, but I guess not everybody does, so I'm going to introduce her anyway. Uh, Suzanne Giesman is a messenger of hope. She's a mystic, a metaphysical teacher, and a medium who shares the awakened way, which is a path of knowing who you are and why you're here. Whether it's in her books, her classes and workshops, her weekly radio show, or her one-on-one sessions, she provides stunning evidence of life after death. Suzanne is a former U.S. Naval commander who served as commanding officer as as an aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Her gift of communication with those on the other side has been recognized as highly credible by noted afterlife researchers, and she brings messages of hope, healing, and love that go straight to the heart. And I also want to say, Suzanne, I consider to be a good friend. I was just thinking this morning, I guess I've known you for almost four years. Um, met you in a workshop down in Pensacola, Florida, like, you know, four years ago. So I want to welcome Suzanne Giesman to Grief to Growth. Thanks, Brian. I've really enjoyed watching you change a bit over the years you were you're still intense but you were so intense and serious when you came to my workshop and and uh i didn't know if you were into all of this or not and now i know that we all are yeah well that was um i think it was february of 2017 so it had been probably a year and a half after shana had passed and i was still at the time very very deep in my grief i i kind of knew who you were at the time uh, my wife had been following you and she said, if Suzanne, if Suzanne ever comes close to us, I want to go see her. And Florida is nowhere close to where we are, but we decided to come and <laughs> it was great. It, it was, it was really great to meet you. And I said that we felt developed a friendship since then. Yeah. So for people who don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into doing this. Well, even just saying that who I am, I've changed so much since oh, 12 years ago or longer, 14 years ago that yeah. when I have to, when I'm asked to tell my story, it's from a whole different point of view now. I recognize that what I'm about to share with you is strictly a story. It's really not who I am. It's not who any of us are at the deepest level, but mm-hmm. we all learn from our stories. So my story is that for most of my life, I was that Navy officer that you just described. And I had no idea there was a greater reality or that there was another aspect to us beyond this human life. And so I lived very much stuck in the story and took my role as a Navy commander very seriously. And it, that served me well because I did get to rise to the hop, top of the whole military uh, lifestyle there, flying with the chairman on Air Force One and Air Force Two and meeting kings and queens. It was just an amazing lifestyle. I got to serve as a commanding officer. That's every, every Navy officer's dream. Uh, But there was still this emptiness inside, this something's missing type of feeling that I know most of us can identify with. And I don't have children of my own, but my husband, Ty, has two daughters. And one of them, Susan, followed in dad's footsteps, but she joined the Marine Corps, even though I said that's like not the best one for women. You know, that's the hardest route. So she took that one. (laughs) And uh, uh, I was with the chairman on 9-11. We were the la- in the last aircraft in U.S. airspace, and that was a real wake-up call for me to start asking why are some people in the wrong place at the wrong time and all those other deep life questions because I knew some of the people that were killed at the Pentagon that I had just left hours earlier. That was my office building. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't satisfied with the answers I got, so just put that aside, the seeking. didn't last for long. And... All I knew was I wanted to run away from life after 9-11. So I did. I retired from the Navy as soon as I was retirement eligible and went with my husband sailing for several years. We sold the house and cars and life was idyllic. I literally ran away from Washington, D.C. 
mm-hmm. which maybe isn't a bad thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and that's when I really had the big wake up call. It was like life said, look, you have a path. You came here to do it. This all was background. And so we, were, we had sailed across the Atlantic Ocean, living a dream. And we're off the coast of Croatia when we got the news that we needed to call home. Something important had happened. And that phone call dropped us to our knees. It was that Susan was crossing the flight line at Marine Corps Air Base where she was stationed. And a bolt of lightning out of the blue struck her down. And they worked on her for seven hours and they couldn't save her. So to find out that Susan was gone in a phone call was oh, it's shattering. We returned to the United States and I grabbed a couple of books on the afterlife to take back to Croatia after the funeral. But it was the funeral itself that really changed my life because in that moment of looking at Susan's body, I knew there was something else besides the body that makes up who we really are. It was this epiphany, having not really seen, no, mm-mm, having not seen anybody. I don't. I may have seen a grandparent or something, but nothing had the effect on me of knowing that that wasn't Susan. That was yeah. just the vehicle. And so I decided to start meditating. I thought well, people have done this. I've heard about this meditation thing. I'm going to see if I can connect with her in whatever form she is. She has to still exist. Hmm. And I'm going to take my husband to see a medium. <laughs> <laughs> and so people need to understand, I had heard about mediums. To, to think that I would one day be a medium was not even on my radar. Yeah. And uh, never saw spirits, never talked to guides. There are no thinking. I, I used to think, no such thing as spirit guides. Can you hear them laughing at me now? <laughs> and uh, the medium... Well, I made sure she didn't know her last name. I was not going to be gullible. I was not going to be hoodwinked by somebody that was a fraud. But uh, this medium nailed it. She brought in a young girl who passed suddenly in her 20s. Who was uh, She had an electric tingly feeling running up and down her arms like, like, like the lightning strike. She said, I have the headache of Zeus and Athena all of a sudden. And Zeus is the god seen with a lightning bolt. Mm. All of that had me sobbing. But what was truly life-changing, Brian, was when that medium said, wait, wait, this young girl who's looking at your husband and saying, daddy, daddy, and she's dancing around in front of you saying, mother, is bringing with her a little baby, a boy she wants to introduce to you, but he's standing back shyly as if he doesn't know you and he's sucking his thumb. Mm. Well, what we hadn't told the, well, we hadn't told the medium anything, but what very few people knew was that Susan was six months pregnant with a boy wow. when she was killed. So we lost both of them that day, but that medium showed us that you don't lose them in the total sense. Physically, yes, mm-hmm. but that, that turned my, my worldview upside down. I couldn't deny there's a greater reality. And so I was all in. I'm going to learn about mediumship. I'm going to find out why it works, how it works. And I'm going to write a book about mediums that people will actually read, not, not, not some textbook, but uh, maybe a biography. And I ended up writing the biography of two mediums. And by attending their classes, found out I can do it too. And I'll just yeah. cut to the quick. I don't do anything halfway. And once I found out I had a connection to the spirit world, my whole life has become about making that connection as clear as possible. Because if I can offer the kind of healing that that medium gave to our family in one hour to anybody else, there would be nothing more sacred to me. And now I get to do it every day. Yeah, one thing I've, I've, well, there's a lot of things I find fascinating about you, but you know, it's interesting that you're you're not what we call a natural born medium. You didn't see spirit from the time you were a child, uh, but I, I know you, I've known you for several years now. And I, I know how you work on things and how you work to develop this. So that gives hopes to people like myself and other people that feel like we don't have this as a natural ability. Uh, so how did you choose to, to meditate to, to connect with Susan? Where, how did, where did that come from? Well, it must've come from the soul because I just knew 
that I had to quiet my mind so I could hear her or sense her. Obviously, mm -hmm. my eyes weren't working to see her. I, I started trying saying, Susan, let me see you. And that never worked. I still to this day have not seen a spirit. But I thought, okay, I'm not going to hear with my, with my physical ears. She's not in physical form anymore. So something in me said, shut out the outer world and maybe I'll find her. And so I just sat and I fell asleep every day for three weeks when I would sit to meditate. It's like the body was saying, woohoo, we finally get nap time. Yeah. <laughs> this one doesn't take naps, you know? And, and then I just started to know things. It was actually three years, three years till I connected with Susan. Hmm. But I connected with other people's loved ones first. That's really important for grieving people to understand that it yeah. takes commitment and just the knowing that they're here, the trust that they're here. But the thing is, Brian, so many other wondrous things happened in those three years, including mm -hmm. a total transformation of how I see the world and how I saw myself, that it was worth it. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's another really important point because I think a lot of us, we want to see our kids or hear them and we feel like we're not connecting if it's not something physical, you know, it, through our, our auditory senses, our visual, and it's really not, it doesn't work that way, I think, for most people. Well, could it also be that Susan was hanging back so I would have all those transformative experiences yeah. and get to know the greater reality better and get to know what love is and self-love is and build up my own consciousness. And then it was like, okay, now I'll come in. And there she is. Yeah. So um, you go through this and you go through this transformation and, and you start, what, what started you actually doing mediumship as a, as a profession or to start reading for people? Well, it was just exactly what I said when I discovered I could connect. And it, if you go to YouTube and, and search for Suzanne Giesman Messages of Hope documentary, you'll see in there we recreated the moment in Janet mm -hmm. Nohavik's class where I was there to mm -hmm. write her story. But she pulled me to the front of the room and said, there's a spirit here. You can do this. What do you sense? I not only got how the guy died, that it was somebody's father, that how old he was and what he looked like. But I, he gave me his nickname. When that happened, I said, oh my God, I can do this too? And like I said before, if I can do this for others, I am all in. And I was. I just started taking classes and working more on myself. And when you take classes, you do practice readings with other people. And I said, wow, this is working. So let's just make every reading a real one and a practice one. To this day, it's a practice of doing mediumship and we just get better and better and better by doing it and that's what makes it so joyful even for the medium <laughs> yeah and, I, and i've seen over the years as as I've, I've watched you develop and i've seen you 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 get excited when you find new techniques and new things that work and you're always you're always pushing yourself you're always trying to get better at, at stuff and um you call yourself an evidential medium and a few mediums do but not all mediums do so what's what's an evidential medium an evidential medium is one who's not satisfied or content until and unless those across the veil give us verifiable facts about them that we couldn't possibly know. That's the evidence. So we don't settle just for messages. Oh, there's a beautiful light here. Your loved one is here. They love you very much. Those are the messages that balance out the evidence in a reading. We need to get both evidence and messages. It doesn't always have to be 50-50, but mm -hmm. there needs to be enough evidence that shows us, that shows the continuity of consciousness through validation that life is continuous. Yeah, and I, I, that's something I've learned from you. And, I, and I've worked with a lot of mediums over the years with helping parents heal. And something I've learned from, from you especially is that there does have to be this balance. I've, I've worked with mediums who just give you a list of evidence and, and it's just, those re readings are very dry. And they're, frankly, they're not very healing. Yes. And then there are some mediums who just will say, your grandmother's here and your grandmother loves you very much. And you know, those would have to wonder, did they really cut with my grandmother or not? So, and I've noticed with yourself, you always establish the evidence, you know, first. And every time I've seen you give a reading or, or do anything, it's always, you, you're about the evidence, which helps us to really to believe and understand that you're really making that connection. I'm glad you noticed that. That's certainly the goal. But, you know, Brian, I've even narrowed it down more lately. Mm -hmm. And I teach, I teach 
I love to show people how this works, that, that you can do it too, because it is a natural ability. We are all souls, and this is soul to soul communication. But what I ask every medium to go for is to capture the essence of that loved one across the veil. Yeah. Who are they as a person and a soul? So you must feel into that personality. If I don't feel their personality, I call the reading off because it is possible to pick up information about someone as a mentalist from the sitter's energy field. And so it's very possible to get that list of evidence and be blown away, wowed. But if you don't capture the essence, how do we know you really had that person there? This is a two-way conversation. They make me laugh, those across the veil, the way they bring things through. I have to tell you, I did one the other day. I started off and I knew the couple had a child who had passed and I tuned in and I was getting a few things, but I said, this feels like a son. And they said, no, it's a daughter. And I thought, whoa. This, uh, you know, you start off and it's, it's like a snowball sometimes, the, the energy picks up. And mm -hmm. I feel like, whoa, that's a big one to get wrong, to not be able to feel male or female. Then we got, her, I dug in and I could feel her personality and now we're flowing. And then all of a sudden she shouted her name at me. And I wow. usually don't get names, but it was an unusual name. It was like, whoa, I said, I, she just gave me the name such and such. And mom very nonchalantly goes, yeah, that's her name. And I went, ah, you have no idea what a miracle it is for me to get the name. And then I started laughing. I said, your daughter, said, <laughs> your daughter just said, just like that. Well, that was to make up for thinking I was a guy. <laughs> and, and the mother laughed and she said, that sounds just like her. And I said, that's because it is her. And mm. that's when you get the essence. And so the test of any good reading is does your client or sitter leave and say oh my god that was my loved one because you, you you capture their essence yeah absolutely and I, that's something that that you do so well when you when you do readings so i i, I a lot of people my listeners are parents who've lost children because of my association with helping parents heal and because of my own story and as you know the name of my show is grief to growth so how do you think mediumship can help in terms of transforming people's grief oh Transformative is the word. I had a father that wrote to me and begged me to do a reading and my waiting list has been closed while I try to catch up with the long list. But mm -hmm. the heart said, do this one. And I did it. He said, my wife is, she's not eating or sleeping well. Well, her son, it was his stepson, came through so beautifully with a few moments. She was pretty serious throughout. Grief, of course, does that. But at one point she laughed too. One of the things he showed us that was so significant. It was, I have to tell you, she told me I could share it. A domino, showed me a little domino. I said, now I don't think he showed me, played the board game. And she goes, let me tell you, let me tell you. He, he was a manager at Domino's. His dad owned a, whole, a Domino's franchise. And one of the things he left was this little domino truck. And no wonder we were clapping. That's a wow, you know, and there were many other wows in that reading, but Afterwards, I wrote to her husband who had originally reached out to me and I said, tell me how she's doing. And he said, she cried every day for two years and she has not cried a single day since her reading. Hmm. So how's that for wrapping up what a one hour session with an evidential medium can do by the grace of spirit when the energy is perfect and you have the best energy with that spirit, with the medium, and with the loved one here. And everything clicks, you can show that parent or any loved one, they are still part of your lives. And so we can't turn back the clock and get them back physically, but it's so much different than dead and gone yeah. forever. And that's simply not the case. Yeah. Now, I know I, I, I've seen some people get, um, I hate to use the word, but get addicted to medium readings. It's like mm -hmm. they want to come back over and over again. So what do you say to someone that's saying, I want to connect with my, like my loved one again. I want to go get another reading. Wow, that's a good question. Just realize that we are here to live our lives. They are living their lives in a different chapter. And just like we would call our loved ones regularly, uh, they're overseas now <laughs> and, yeah. and it's a long distance call and it costs a little bit of money and 
trusting that they're here is one huge goal. Developing your own sense of their presence is huge. There's only so much they can tell you through a medium. So it's realizing we don't need the medium. We, the, the greatest thing we can do is develop that connection ourselves, And that's how I started on this path. My sole goal was to connect with Susan. And she doesn't come through that often, but when she does, it's a bonus, it's wonderful. But I just trust that she's around and live my life to the fullest in her honor. Yeah. And what would you say to someone, they're new to this thing, this mediumship thing, and they're, they're saying, I, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm skeptical. Um, should I, you know, what would you say to that person? I would say, watch that word skeptical and say, I'm open-minded. Because I, I just heard a recording with David Hawkins the other day, and he said, people who are atheists create exactly what they expect. There is no God. That's, you get what you expect. And I said, this is exactly what happens in a reading. Hmm. If you expect that there's no connection, you, your wishes may very well be fulfilled because you are blocking that whole flow of energy. Remember how I said it's so important that the sitter is part of that connection. Mm -hmm. And I've had this happen so much so that if somebody says, I want you to do a reading for my neighbor who's grieving, I won't do the reading unless the neighbor shows me, I want this reading, I'm open to it. Because if they're skeptical and they only do it because their friend says, I should have this reading with this person who was a medium, who's probably a fraud, guess what? They're going to get nothing. And they've just proven themselves right in their own mind. But mm -hmm. we know better. So being open-minded, open-hearted is hugely important because it's a flow of energy and it's part of our life's path to open up to the greater reality. If we're already shut to it beforehand, you're not gonna experience it. And, and it's interesting because what I hear you saying, you said be careful with the word skeptical because I, I tell people to be skeptical really means to be, still be open-minded. It yes. just means to be to be cautious. And to, so when you went to see the medium, you said you weren't, you weren't gonna be gullible, you weren't gonna feed or anything, but you were open to the experience. I was, and I was skeptical. So that word is valid, but just mm -hmm. I'm saying be cautious of it. And we should be. Mm -hmm. Every time I say should, my guides grab me, watch the shoulds, okay? It is beneficial to be skeptical. Mm -hmm. uh, because not everybody does make a good connection, but that open-mindedness and open-heartedness is hugely important for the energy field that you all create together. Well, I have to say, I've been, I've been in this field for about four years now working with, with people like mediums, et, et cetera. And I find a lot of people in this field are still skeptical. You know, I, uh, Sandra Champlain, one of the first people I started listening to her podcast, she still calls herself a skeptic. And I know a lot of mediums are skeptical, not about mediumship itself, but about individuals. We don't, we don't know if that person is on the up and up or, or, or a good, you know, good medium or not. So I think you're right. It is beneficial to be skeptical, but we need to be open-minded when the evidence does present itself. And you know what I was shown the other day? Because I'm still skeptical about some other medium. I was mm -hmm. shown I'm projecting. So somebody must have told us something about mediums or how other people are. And we're certainly not that way. So we projected on other people. We don't want to be thought of that way. So we projected on other people. So it's really interesting the lessons we learn from our own defenses, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it is. So um, when, when uh, I, again, I, 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 my experience is mostly with parents. And when a parent loses a, a, a child, I think it's a, I hate to say special kind of grief, because every grief event is, is unique and different. But we can get into a really, really deep grief. And I've heard some mediums say, well, that grief can prevent you from making your own connection, which to hear that as a parent, it, it just hurts because like, how do I get out of this? How do I make that connection? So what would you say to that person? You don't push it down. You allow it to be present and you honor it. In honoring that grief, you're honoring the love for your loved one. You realize it's a process. Your book, your program is grief to growth. You go through that grief for the growth that ensues. And you know that as you go through it, instead of suppressing it, your connection with your loved one will eventually 
awaken as your vibration rises. Mm -hmm. I want to just give you an example of uh, two days ago, I sat to do a reading and the same exact thing happened two days in a row. I said, this feels like a son. And they said, no, it's a daughter. And I went, oh, not again. This is not good. And then I said, okay, we're going to get the personality. And I felt nothing, no personality. And that's why I go for the personality. Because mm -hmm. I could have then sat there and read their minds about their daughter, but that's not, there's no integrity in that. And I said, what's going on here? And I knew exactly what was going on. My husband and I had just been working on our Japanese garden. We just calculated it an hour ago. We moved literally one ton of stone that morning, the two of us. Oh, wow. I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. Mentally, I felt good, but physically, I was so tired, but I had scheduled this reading and by God, I was going to do it. And clearly, my energy was off. So I knew if I don't feel that personality and I got the gender wrong two days in a row, this time it's me. It's definitely me. And so I asked them to reschedule for this morning. Mm. And right after that reading, I fell asleep immediately and I don't do naps. So I knew it was me. This morning I got up, I cleared my chakras. I was like, we're going to do this. Right away, I can feel my guide. She, she's present. I didn't feel her the other day. And boom, that young girl stepped in, the personality. It was a five bar reading. So hmm. what am I saying? Grief, tiredness, illness, all of these affect our ability to tune in. So yes, grief will get in the way of your connection. But what do we do? We give it time. We rest the body. We, we work through it because if you push it down and deny it, it's still there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, that's why I tell people that I work with when it comes to grief, you've got to, you've got to feel it and you've just got to let it come through you. And, and I was working with someone just yesterday and, and lots of people apologize to me for crying when we're working. And I'm like, don't ever apologize for crying. Those tears are healing. Those tears are, those tears are cathartic. They, they help. You got to push that stuff through you. And I heard you say earlier that, you know, with yourself, even it took you several years to connect with Susan. So I also encourage people, you know, to be patient um, with yourself and with your loved one. Yeah. But a very important point is not to despair. I mean, I, I got, we got fabulous signs from Susan in those three years. Yeah. I'm talking about feeling her step in, hearing her voice and having a conversation with her. That took three years. But mm. in the meantime, watch the documentary. We got the butterflies. We got the TVs yeah. turning on. We got the signs. She was around, but the, the other thing is, Brian, as you well know, grief comes in waves. So it's yes. not like, when am I finally past it? There will be moments of joy even when you're going through the grief process. There will be moments of beautiful lucidity when perhaps your loved one will get through far sooner than with me. We're all unique, each one of us. Yeah, it, it is. It's a different journey for everyone. As you said, some people, they might make that connection right away. But when there there are people that do despair, and I've seen this when it's, when it's taken longer than they think it should take, especially in those early stages of grief, when they're just, just so heavy. And so, um, so I, maybe even closed off to having that connection. Um, but it's also interesting. I talk, I'll talk to people say, well, I haven't had any signs and I'll ask them, those, well, have you had any dream? Oh, we yeah, have had dreams <laughs> or, you know, or, or yeah. I've had, you know, the, the TV keeps turning on and off, but I haven't had any signs. Oh gosh. Yeah. Yeah. We have to educate people about signs for sure. Yeah. It was something I wanted to tell you, but I just, I lost it. So keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you were talking about your guide and you mentioned, you said she, I didn't know that you, you had an individual guy because I know about Sanaya. I know about yeah. this, this group that you, that you channel. We'll, we'll talk about Sanaya, but tell me about your guide. How long have you? Oh, you know her. <laughs> I had Boris, my main mediumship guide for the first yeah. decade of doing this work, but now it's Brenda. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. we have a friend. You knew Brenda. You met yeah. her, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and so Brenda is a real pistol when she was here in physical form. And she had told everybody she was studying mediumship. And Suzanne and I are going to be teaching mediumship in a school someday. And I thought, really, Brenda? I don't know about that. And uh, she actually helped me teach a class with the Shift Network earlier this year. It was stunning. I had a chair set out for her with her boa on the chair and she would pull me over here and I would channel her. It was, it was amazing and hilarious actually how she would 
take over the class with evidence. And that then within the last, in this last year, she has shown me that she is my mediumship guide now. We'll get back to grief to growth in just a few seconds. Did you know that Brian is an author and a life coach? If you're grieving or know someone who is grieving, his book, Grief to Growth, is a best-selling, easy-to-read book that might help you or someone you know. People work with Brian as a life coach to break through barriers and live their best lives. You can find out more about Brian and what he offers at www.grieftogrowth.com, www.grief, the number two, growth.com, or text GROWTH, G-R-O-W-T-H, to 31996. If you'd like to support this podcast, visit www.patreon.com slash grief to growth, www.patreon.com slash G-R-I-E-F, the number two, G-R-O-W-T-H, to make a financial contribution. And now, back to grief to growth. In every reading, Boris has stepped back and it's stunning, Brian. Before every reading, we sit down, we play this game. I say, you hear Brenda? She goes, yeah. I say, what's going on with our friend Lynette? And boom, she shows me what Lynette is doing in the moment. Uh, yesterday, to, or no, in yesterday's reading, I said, no, it was whatever, three days ago. I sit down, I said, Brenda, are you here? She goes, yeah. And she shows me Lynette moving a zipper up and down. So I quickly get on there. I said, Brenda's ready to work. She says, or she shows me you using a zipper. And Lynette texted back, OMG, this very instant. I mean, it's just stunning that this little fun game filled with evidence that our guides are real, that somebody we love, Brenda, is here working now. And it's magical. That, that is, that's really wild because I met Brenda and Lynette in that workshop that I met where I met you and they oh, were yeah. at the time, like follow you around the country, like your, you know, your own personal groupies. Yep. And Brenda, uh, I, I was going to say was when she was here was a force. And I know as soon as she crossed, she came to you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, another one, you know, like what's Lynette doing time to do a reading. You ready to work? Oh yeah. She, I, Lynette, Brenda shows me you have your hand in ice. You're breaking up ice. She goes, that eh, little spy. <laughs> you know, Cause this is what she's doing. It's, mm -hmm. It's stunning, it's fun, it's magical. And this is the kind of connection we can get with our loved ones. You notice, this is without going through some big ritual, quieting my mind. I just sit down, I know she's here. Just like I try to get all of you to understand your loved ones who pass, when you think about them, they're right here. So it's yeah. just, hey, what do you have to tell me? And you can get to the point where you have that kind of relationship. Your daughter has dropped in on me like that many times, hasn't I she? I know, yeah, she has. Boom. Yeah. You know, but it's interesting as you say that also, because I think sometimes you think of our guides as these, you know, these exalted beings that, you know, and, and, um, you know, I, I'm reading this series of book called the team. I've read the, I've read it a couple of times. I love this book, these books, but they talk about how we, we are, we come here in teams, you know, and we, we play different roles in each other's lives. And so Brenda was here, Brenda played a role in your life in the physical and now Brenda has crossed before you is playing a role as, as your guide right now. I, I didn't realize that she'd become your guide on the other side. That's really cool. And as you say that about her, some exalted being, she's cracking me up. She's putting on like this turban and she's acting like that, but hamming it up because she's, she's anything. But what, what allowed Brenda to step into that role so quickly is that she worked so hard on herself to clear out the blockages and the gunk. And she truly found self-love while in a human body and that's our path to realize we're already that love that everybody's seeking out here and once we awaken to that like it's like icing on the cake yeah and i want to i want to talk about i want to talk about brenda some more I, I i just i love talking about brenda but you know she she had this illness that that she was you know seeking healing from the physical illness i know she saw the saw a healer and I thought it was interesting because, you know, the healer said, I guess, um, that Brenda was healed, but not physically. And That's exactly right. She cleared out the last of the gunk. It was Deborah Martin. And you can find that interview on my radio show, Messages of Hope, through my website and the archives. An in incredible story of how she sought healing of her cancer, but she died of the cancer. But she was healed. 
emotionally, spiritually. And that's what she says. I went straight to the head of the class, Brenda did. Yeah, I think it's important for people to know because a lot of times uh, when we when we lose a loved one, we're like, why did they have to go? Why wasn't my prayer answered? Why weren't they healed? You know, and and I remember, um, this is kind of a segue, but I remember when you were channeling Sanaya at, it was either the HPH conference, it was another conference. And it was the HPH because there were everybody in the room that lost children. Um, everybody in the room had a child transition. And someone asked, why did this happen to us? And Sanaya's answer was basically, you see it as a tragedy from the human perspective, but from a higher perspective, it's a, it's a different thing. Uh, and I, I still remember that when you, when you or you or Sanaya said that, and it's something I, I take forward as I've worked with parents that, that have gone through this, because we, we have a very limited perspective that, that talking to someone like you and taking your classes and going to your workshops can help us open up this, this broader perspective of who we really are. Yeah, that's, that's ultimately the greatest fringe benefit of trying to connect across the veil. We find out there were so much more than these finite beings, and it's, it is transformational. Yeah, well, that's, I think it's, that's kind of what it's all about. It's that, and, and I, I, when you talked earlier, I said, tell me about you, and you corrected me and said it's about your story. And we, we identify so closely with our story, oh. but we are these infinite beings. Yep, and you say that, and it reminds me that we got invited to the Marine Corps birthday dinner here where I live in my community. We're part of the, I live in a community called Moss Creek, and they have Moss Creek Marines, and Ty and I are honorary members because of Susan being a Marine, and we're both retired Navy officers. Mm -hmm. So we're honored that they allow us, these Marines allow us to be part of their group. But Ty said, I'm wearing my uniform to that dinner. And I thought, oh, we are allowed to wear our uniforms to specific things like that. And I found mine. Now, I've retired. It's really scary. 17 years ago now. But I found my uniform. And it still fits, which is awesome. But mm -hmm. I put it on. And then I found this bag of all my medals and all my ribbons and all my doodads that say I was, that's a terrible word. No disrespect to the uniform, but that says I was mm -hmm. a commanding officer and I served mm -hmm. on the joint staff. And Brian, I felt myself getting caught up in the story. Ooh, I even ordered a new set of ribbons because it didn't have the last one that I earned on my retirement day. You know, it was like my guides caught me up short and said, yo, what is happening to you? And the next day I canceled the order of the ribbons. Hmm. And I said, you know, we love our stories. But I see now I'm so proud of my time in the military. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to wear my uniform to that dinner because that's not who I am anymore. Yes, it was a wonderful role, but when you identify with the role, when it causes you to feel more important or special or all those mm -hmm. things, that's a trap. That's a real trap. And so, yeah. yeah, I honor the story because of that background, people pay attention when I talk about the greater reality. So many people say, oh, if she, can believe, then it's safe for me to believe. And it is. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't want to go back to allowing roles to, sh to show me who I think I am. Yeah, so a lot of times. Are we? Who are yeah. we? We're souls. We are the light. We are the expression of this life force who put on costumes. And I'm not talking about a uniform. I'm talking about this body. And I know this is so because I talk to those who no longer have a body every day. That's what mediumship shows us. So my greatest goal is to see all of us here in physical form without the body, to see everybody as the light. In the military, you walk down the hallway, you immediately have to look at what rank they are, especially if you're outside, so you know if you have to salute them or not. You look at the ribbons, you look at their insignia to identify them, to put them in little boxes and see how you relate. Mm -hmm. That's, that, that is the antithesis of seeing everybody as the expression of love, of light. You see the difference? Yeah. And it yeah. was stunning how quickly I was just going to fall right back in that role. Ooh, I get to dress up. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point because I think um, we do get caught up in roles and, and we can either cling to those roles sometimes, especially I, I know sometimes parents, when, again, when a child transition, am I still a mother? Am I still a father? And, and we've, we grieve the loss of that role. And we're like, you know, who am I now? Because I'm, I, that's all I, that I was. Or if someone gets divorced, I'm not a wife anymore. 
So that clinging to the roles can cause us a lot of suffering. Yeah. So you just, you know, we've come to this life to play roles and we do, we, we do have to identify ourselves in some way because mm -hmm. that's how we relate to people. But the question I ask is I show a slide often with this little character with a ball and chain around the ankle, does that role help you or hinder you? I yeah. still will slip into the commander role when I need to be really organized and get things done, but I open my heart at the same time and try not to be rigid about things. So that role served me well and still does, but I don't want it to become my identity. That's yeah, and it makes it makes life a lot lighter, I think, when we can when we can start to carry that perspective on a daily basis. I, I am not this body. I'm not just you know, Brian, I'm not just Suzanne. This is a role that I'm playing. I've played other roles before. I'll play other roles in the future. Um, I think it makes it, we can more easily let go of the things that seem so burdensome, you know, in, the, in this world. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, these are the deeper spiritual lessons that all come out of studying mediumship. So it's just a blessing all around. Well, we're going through, you know, incredibly difficult times it seems like for everybody right now and i'm sure as a medium you probably get asked what's your opinion of what's going on and what's going to happen and uh so that leads to a question you know what's the difference between a psychic and a medium and do you do psychic things or or do you talk to dead people both because once you can talk to a spirit you tune into an energy field and we in human forms are that energy field field. We just happen to have a body. So if you can tune into a spirit without a body, you can also tune into a spirit with a body. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you just merge your energy field and read it. But as far as the future, the, I don't see the future as laid out in stone. It's so variable depending on the choices people make. So mm -hmm. the future is predictable to a certain point because you can get the higher perspective and see all the parts coming together based on choices that have already been made or about to be made. But mm -hmm. too much farther than a few weeks out, it's challenging. There are some who can do that very well, but that's not too usual. So a psychic is reading the energy of someone here in a physical body. Mediumship is someone who's no longer in a body or guides and angels mm -hmm. above that. Uh, as far as what's going on now, the guides continuously just say, it's all going to depend on the choices that you all make, but everything, everything, especially chaos and unrest is an opportunity to learn through trial and error, what works and what doesn't. And always when we tune into the heart and align with the light, the force that flows through us, we come together in much more beautiful ways. Yeah, I think the, I, I think the chaos. So it's from my perspective, the chaos and numbers do bring bring us sometimes stark choices, and we we realize we, we we've got to make choices. It exposes things that maybe we we could be doing better. Um, but I know this is a time where a lot of people are feeling um, nervous. They're feeling very scared oh, yeah. um, and wondering if everything's going to be okay. Ultimately, everything at the deepest level is okay because source yeah. can't be harmed and we are an expression of that. And we will all eventually leave these physical bodies and say, God, it was like waking up from a dream and I look at them and I'm still fine. So if only I had known then that all is well. So if we could just, it's like they say, die daily to the ego, to the story, right? If we could just join our loved ones in our awareness, to sit beside them looking down on us, they tell us, our loved ones tell us repeatedly in my readings, it's fine. Everything is okay. So we, we get caught up in the drama and forget there's another whole perspective we can take and find that peace that's already present. Yeah, and I, 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 I get your messages every day from Sanaya, uh, and, I, and I appreciate those very much because I get, I, first thing I, I look at when I get on Facebook in the morning, and it helps for people, it helps for me to try to keep that perspective that, that, Everything ultimately is okay. We, we, you know, the, the drama, I think for some, at some level, we like the drama. I guess we must because we come here and do it, right? Yeah. Uh, so what would you say, what is, what is the purpose? Why do we come here and do this? Source, spirit, God, consciousness, awareness is already whole and complete. But it's so full and to overflowing with potential it's basically people says it's to get to know itself better. No, it's complete. It knows itself intimately. So it decides to know itself as something other than itself. 
So it becomes limited and finite in billions of expressions for the experience of being something other than whole and complete. And through making choices, we get to experience completeness, fullness, joy, beauty, creativity, and something other than that. And it's so painful at times we say, ah, yes, but I know what it feels like to be complete. So I'm just going to keep following that nudge back to completeness. So it's for the experience of all of it. The good, the bad, the not so good, the not so bad, the whole palette, because it is school. We are here to learn lessons, but it's more like art school, how to make something more beautiful out of the beauty that you already are. Hmm. Wow. That, that was, I appreciate that. Was, that's a great way of putting it. So sometimes though people, and I, how do you, I don't know how you feel about soul planning. So I will ask you, how do you feel about soul planning? Because when I talk to parents and they hear soul planning, they were like, I would never plan this. Why, yeah. why would I do this to myself? <laughs> I, I can understand that. Trust me. Oh, yeah, I know you have know. these moments where I say, let me off the planet, you know? And then mm -hmm. there are those other moments where you just know I am in this world, but not of it. Uh, I've asked my guides about soul planning and there are absolutely roles we agreed to take on, milestones we agreed to, to achieve, exit points, sometimes multiple when we can leave because mm -hmm. we will have learned a certain amount. But within that, there's, there is some sway because we have that free will get too far off the path and you will get nudged back. Uh, other than that, I don't want to get into that too deeply because it's still going to be a story. Anything mm -hmm. that I tell you, I won't know ultimate truth till I get to the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I was, I was, I was looking for your opinion. It's something that comes up a lot and um, it's interesting because some people say, yeah. And I know, I know people that are very well versed in, in the afterlife and they're like, absolutely it's planned. I know other people say, well, no, it's all about free will. My personal thing is I don't think we know. I think it's, it, it's somehow both and, and our human minds can understand how it can be both at the same, at the same time. Well, it's but, like we're both human and soul at the same time. It's not either or. Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, I, I tell people, I was talking with someone yesterday and they were just like, I just can't accept this. And I said, then fine, yes. <laughs> then don't. If it, if, it, if it doesn't help you, then, then don't. But what we can know is that we are ultimately going to be okay. And that, and that it's just, this, this is a, um, it's a temporary thing, right? How about we, oh, we are okay right now beneath the layers of gunk that just needs to be excavated. Yeah, we are okay now. It's in yeah. there. Let me that help you through this time. Now, I've, I've alluded to Sanaya a couple of times, and people may not know, be familiar with Sanaya. So tell us who or what Sanaya is. They're my guides who laughed at me when I said there's no such thing as spirit guides back when I was still in commander mode. And they've just proven themselves to me with evidence over and over and over again. And these daily messages that come through when I sit to meditate each morning. Thousands of people read them now, Brian, it, mm -hmm. and, and it's what compels me to keep going because they touch people at a heart level and they keep us balanced and centered. But the, the evidence comes in beautiful ways, like they'll give me a morning message and they'll, they'll start by talking about puppies and then make a metaphor about puppies and life. And then I find out later it's National Puppy Day, that kind of evidence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just magical. And... Uh, it started well over a decade ago. There are thousands of them on my website. Mm -hmm. it's, we, you can find it easily by going to dailyway.org or on my Facebook page and sign up to get them by email. The one thing the guides have said over and over is that we get so caught up in our human roles and the drama. We're here for the experience, but it's really great to read something uplifting, something that helps us bring our soul awareness to the front and center so these daily way messages and there are many other things we can be reading as well are just a way to do that to not get so caught up in the drama that we think this human life is all there is yeah i think um i think it's this it's all about balance as you said earlier we have to be we have to be both we have to be in you used in, in the world but not of it and so i know your background's not really um in, in religious stuff but my background is very religious so i quote jesus all the time 
and being in the world but not of it keeps coming back to me over and over again and, and when i'm when i'm talking to people i'm like okay we have to be part of the human story the human story does make a difference you know we do feel real pain and everything but we are at the same time this this magnificent being that's that everything is all well and we have to we don't want to get so lofty that we can't function here um because i've heard people say that they've had spiritual transformative experiences where they lost their ego and they're like i couldn't do anything it's like <laughs> I, I couldn't go to work i couldn't do anything yeah. but on the other hand we don't want to get really too bogged down either so something like sanaya to me on a daily basis you know really helps me to say okay yeah i'm, I'm going to be okay i need to go out and still do my thing during the day i've got to go through all the stuff we have to go through as human beings and I was talking with someone just earlier today, we were saying, you know, cause we're both, we're both followers of you. And we were saying how, you know, we, we we're looking forward to going home, but we're enjoying being here at the same time. That's wonderful. And, and that's, that's the whole goal to enjoy the experience during the good times and during the times that aren't so good, just recognize it is an experience and this too shall pass. I wanted to say that Sanaya is the name that this group of guides gave me when they first came through in 2000. Mm-hmm nine or 10. And I looked up the name and it, it means eminent distinguished and of the gods. It means one worth knowing, but it was years later, Brian, I found out it also means flash of lightning, Hmm. which is how Susan was killed. And so it's a group of higher beings. They, they change sometimes as a different voice speaking like a literary voice, sometimes Hmm. philosophical, sometimes scientific, but, uh, they know what they're doing far better than I do. Yeah. Well, I've, uh, as I said, I've known you for a while. And I remember uh, when I met you, you were starting to channel Sanaya publicly. You'd only done it a couple of times, I think, before that. And uh, I got to say, for me, it was a really interesting experience because you said, you know, I, don't, I didn't know if you were into this stuff or not. And that was a little bit beyond my comfort zone. But uh, I've seen evidence since then that it's definitely absolutely for real. Oh, yeah. I love when the, the guys come and they're like, I don't know, is she memorizing all those words? And then we take questions from the audience and the answers are immediate, they're fluent, they're clear, they're lengthy, and there's just no denying that's not coming from this one. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Suzanne, you're, everybody wants to get a reading with you. And I know you're, you're, I think you're not even taking waiting lists anymore at this time. We, but I know they're because we just got it down to under 800 for, from 1,000. So. Yeah. Well, you know, you, the, you're like I said, I, 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 when I talk about you, I always assume everybody knows who you are because I know that you're, you're definitely one of the best mediums in the world in terms of your, your messaging and the evidence and everything else that you do. But I know you give your, of yourself in a lot of other ways with your radio program and, your, and your, um, what you're doing with this, the um, Shift Network. And so tell people other ways that they can reach you besides just getting a reading with you. Well, that's the thing, Brian. It's kind of the old give a man a fish or teach a man a fish. I can't, I can't deny the impact of a reading and I love doing them and I will continue to do them, but I can reach far more people and help them help themselves by teaching you how to connect yourself. So I do that in a variety of ways. First, I have my radio show just to give us hope. That's a weekly thing. And then I have monthly mentoring sessions, which people happily find very valuable because I keep doing them. And what that is, is the freshest teaching from the guides over the past month. They've never failed me. Two solid hours of what the guides want us to know about connecting, about mediumship, about our lives, about raising consciousness. So those are monthly mentoring. And then I have this uh, three courses with the Shift Network. Two are already done. I have a new one starting in December with a big uh, launching event for that, I believe sometime in November. If you're on my email list, you'll find out about it or Brian can tell you about it, uh, Mm -hmm. his email list. And then what else? I have online classes. I have meditation CDs, lots of free gifts on my website, suzanngeesman.com slash gifts, and probably a hundred YouTube videos and just so many tools to help you connect yourself. You never know if you can be a medium for other people till you try if you haven't been seeing spirits your whole life. I'm the, the living proof of that. So it's, it's fun to open ourselves to new experiences. And most of all, the, the greatest gift I can give everybody besides showing that their loved ones are still here is showing how much love is inside you right now. This is just an awesome journey to be on with all of you. Yeah, it's, um, as I said, you know, getting to know you over the years and watching as how you've developed uh, your, 
your integrity, your professionalism. Um, it's just, it's really, uh, it touches people, which is why everybody wants to, wants to get a reading with you. So uh, people always ask me, like, who's the best medium you know? I'm like, well, you can't get a reading with her. So let me give uh, you somebody, let me give you somebody else. But uh, there are other ways that people can, can learn from you and experience, you know, what you've experienced. And, and your story is just uh, your story, not who you are, but your story is, is really, you know, inspirational. I think and, and for people that are skeptical and say, you know, this stuff is all woo woo and, you know, uh, your Naval commander background, I think gives you credibility. So. Well, you know, the, the greatest thing for me is the joy of doing readings when, when these wows come through. And I'll, I'll say, ooh, that's a wow. And I still do. I get so excited when something fun happens. And I remember this one guy who came with his wife, and they each got a reading separately. And he came in, and I said, so how do you feel about mediumship? And he says, well, I'm kind of on the fence about it. And I said, all right. And all this stuff came through, and, and including his brother who – showed me a special knife that his, he still had from his brother. He showed me his brother was really angry. So it wasn't just, oh, here's your brother who loves you. He was an angry man. And then in comes this guy's friend. I said, your, your, your friend's showing me, you guys used to smoke these funny little cigarettes. And he's saying, how you doing, bro? And he also tells me you actually have Native American background. And the guy's eyes are just wide like this. And when the reading was over, I said, so how do you feel about mediumship now? And he says, I got to tell you, I'm not on the fence anymore. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, spirit did that. They got another convert there to the fact that we are not alone. So I just want to tell everybody, talk to your loved ones. Brian, the, the thing that I'm not satisfied unless I get it in every reading is current events. What has your loved one just done recently? Mm -hmm. What's going on in their life now to show they're here with you? Like your daughter tells me you just spilled a glass of water and you were wiping it up right before the reading. Or your, your husband tells me you have a tooth that's missing right here. Yeah, it just fell out. These kind of things. Like, mm -hmm. like Lynette is, is moving a zipper up and down. These are common events that the spirits see because they are part of our lives. They are right here. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm glad you said that because uh, my daughter, you, you and Shana seem to have a special relationship. So Shana will drop in on you and, and you came by our house, I guess it was about a year ago. And you were telling us things that we were, we were doing that day or a couple of days before. And Shana will tell you things that are happening in our lives or, uh, you know, I remember one time you said something about Kayla was playing with the basketball and I was like, well, Suzanne's got that wrong because Kayla won't touch a basketball. My daughter hates any kind of sports. And we called her and said, you know, were you playing with the basketball? I thought maybe your boyfriend, had, you know, they were playing with the basketball or something. And she'd been playing with one of the little girls she was watching uh -huh. and they were making balls out of Play-Doh and pretending that they were bouncing them like basketballs. So uh -huh. I, when, when you said that, I was like, there's no way that that's right. Um, so, and I could tell, I could go on and on with stories just between, between your, my, yourself and myself. But I say this to the audience, to be open and to look for look for signs and 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 there are just incredible things and uh, I had a friend once she asked me she's a she's a uh, I guess she would call herself an atheist maybe she called herself agnostic but she didn't believe in mediumship at all but she was open minded she said tell me the best medium you know Brian because I want to get a reading from the best medium that you know I don't I don't believe this is going to work I'm not going to tell her any information but I'm going to I'm going to check it out for myself and I gave her the name of a friend of mine and she called me back later on she said. She blew me away. She made, yeah. she converted me. She, and so yeah. mm -hmm. I, you know, I was like, I, I, I was so glad. And now she's a, she's a believer. I've had her on my show. She's like, yeah, I'll tell everybody about this woman because she told me things she couldn't possibly know. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and spirit will pull out all the stops to let us know this when, when, when it serves the greater good. Mm -hmm. I have one woman, I was getting next to nothing and I could, feel this woman's grandmother here with me but it just it was like pulling teeth and I said I'm sorry it's just not flowing and the woman said doggone it this happens every time I mean I feel my grandmother around me but I just can't believe she's here yeah you know grandma had to hold back because that was this woman's life lesson to open up to trust and believe our beliefs are so important yeah yeah, that's good. That's good to know. That's that's. I think that's important for all of us. And so I want to encourage people, as I said, to to stay open, to 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 look for the evidence, um, to look for the signs. Uh, you know, if you if you thinking about getting a medium reading, find find a good medium, find a recommendation, 
uh, it can uh, and it can change your life. I've seen it change people's lives. Like the woman who whose son came through and said, "Mom, you don't need those meds anymore." And I said, "Check with your doctor if you can go off this medication." But she was so transformed by that reading, she went back to work, and her colleague said, "What meds are you on? You're so happy all of a sudden." She said, "My son is my meds." <laughs> yeah, you know that's it. She found out he's still around and. That's what we need to know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Suzanne, I really appreciate you doing this. I know how crazy busy you are, so I appreciate you fitting this into your schedule. Uh, it's always good talking to you. So uh, um, Nothing I'd rather do, Brian, than let people know how real this is. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, you have a good weekend. You too. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. That's it for another episode of Grief to Growth. I sure hope you got something out of it. Please stay in contact with me by reaching out at www.grieftogrowth.com. That's grief, the number two, growth.com. Or you can text the word growth to 31996. That's simply text growth, G-R-O-W-T-H, to 31996. Since you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you're subscribed. So hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell here and it'll notify you when I have new content. Always please share the information if you enjoy it. That helps me to get more views and to get the message out to more people. Thanks a lot and have a wonderful day.